Well, if it looks as though you have seen that jacket before, his son Kelly Kaniski has worn one very similar to it here in this um, ring. Gene Kaniski has worn that one in this ring too. Gene Kaniski is an aggressive, uh, turbulent individual who loves nothing better than a two-fisted battle. And he will go up against Tank Patton with and he's accusing Patton of having too big a belly. He could be right. Uh, and as Gene Kaniski comes outside the ring, which is an old ritual with him, he has often stepped outside that ring and then charged right in in that inimitable fashion of the Wildcat from not only Edmonton, Canada, Alberta, Canada, but from the University of Arizona. And as Kaniski gets in, he's got these fans solidly behind him because they don't like Patton, they don't like the way that he wears that cast on his arm, and they want Kaniski to belt him from here to the dressing room and back again. Tank Patton stung him, but that's all. Oh, ho, 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 ho. There is Gene Kaniski uncorking. I'll tell you, as the world's heavyweight champion, Kaniski was always wide open, rough, rugged, ready to mix it, ready to go at it. He had a way of capping everything that he did with, um, with, with winning. Winglock and Gene Kaniski has it, but he is almost thrown across the ring, and Nick Kozak is telling him he's not supposed to hang on to that rope. Kaniski, of course, is anxious to be involved in the finals of this great Gold Cup tournament here in the Coliseum tomorrow night. He believes that he has the stuff that's going to put him through there because he has the knowledge, the experience, the competitive spirit, and certainly the uh, good physical condition to battle his way right through any number of people. Up against the big tank right now, he could prove to be a tank destroyer. So Kaniski, he's rousting Nick Kozak around a little bit there. And as Tank holds up, he doesn't quite know what to expect. Tank was making some rude remarks in the dressing room about has-beens and pointedly making them toward Kaniski. And he may have to eat some of those words. Kaniski's move, and it's a further adage that when you know what you're doing, why you get those people with you and they stick along with you. Kaniski does much of his wrestling right now in Canada and he, he just loves to mix it. So by taking control of Patton by the arm, by the head, and then doing a slide off his face. Gene Kaniski has really scored. <laughs> Tell you, if you like this kind of action, tomorrow night we will have 12 great matches. We will have a battle royal with 12 wrestlers in the ring at the same time. And we have them very, very rarely. But this is an important one. And there will be matches formed in the order in which the men are eliminated. Number one and number two are paired. Number three and four come back and wrestle each other. This is the way it goes. We, then we continue until one man remains undefeated. That means 11 matches follow the Battle Royal. So you make your way to the Coliseum tomorrow night. If you can get your tickets in advance, you be at the Sam Houston, be at the 1919 Caroline during the day. If you're watching this on Sunday morning, 
then we suggest we're open right now and you can come and visit us and we'll be glad to see you. 1919 Caroline is at the corner of Pierce in downtown Houston. And Gene Kaniski right now is riding the quest, crest of the wave as he moves in on Tank Patton. These fans have taken to big uh, gangling individual who has his own style but uh, is a little bit dazed right now. Gene says, I may miss here and there, but he said, but I hit most of them, and that's what does it. Tank Patton is trying to cut him down to size if he possibly can. So Gene taking the punishment in the corner, Patton trying to set him up, the five minute mark being called, and as Patton slams him over, he comes up with a reverse chin lock. Patton in behind, it is not necessarily a chokehold. The manner in which he is, is holding the grip with the chin in the crook of the arm precludes it being a chokehold. We've got coverage here tonight from Japan. Japanese magazines have sent the photographer to cover the three days of our tournament here in Houston. There is the bear hug as Gene Kaniski picks the 300 pounds of Tank Patton first up off the mat and then gets him standing, dangling on his toes. And Patton is caught in the ropes and whoa! <laughs> that knee lift was always one of the favorite moves of Gene Kaniski as challenger for the world title and then as world's heavyweight champion. And Patton wants to see if he can keep Kaniski from getting back up there and getting a, a rest without, uh, without punishment. So as Patton comes in, he starts to look to see how he can finish off this tremendously potent individual who knows what it's like to be champion and knows what it's like to be ex-champion and likes being champion better. Caught him in the throat. Drove out there with the fingers extended and joined and hit him in the windpipe and now as Patton bears down we've got um, Kaniski hold up and suddenly the crowd becomes very still. They, they don't want to see Kaniski punished in this manner. And here as the walloping goes, we, that long arm and that big foot and the hard swing and Kaniski gets ready but he ran into Patton's knee. Top is Gene Kaniski. There's two. There's three. We've got a win for Gene Kaniski. And he has continued beautifully. Gene Kaniski scores and scores well in this battle here against 325 pounds of Tank Patton. So you know that he's got a great chance of winning on Sunday night, and you can use your support. J.J. Sleep Shop, well, they're the kind of a place that always has a bargain that's going to please you.